Suppose you're writing your scientific paper and you have the perfect spot picked out for a speech spectrogram. It's going to go right there. And you're familiar with using Prot, and one thing you could do is just take that screenshot and drop it right in the paper, but that might not give you the best image quality. What you really want is a new image that you exported, say using a program like R. So today we're going to talk about drawing speech spectrograms using the output of Prot, but then using R to export a high quality image. So here we are in Prot. What we want to do is click on the sound object, and to obtain the spectrum, we look over on the menu choices on the right. One of them says Analyze Spectrum. We click on that, and we get this menu. Now we're going to click to Spectrogram. Now we get a lot of different options, so let's walk through what those options mean for your image. The first thing is the window length. This really determines whether you're going to draw a broadband or a narrowband spectrogram. So with this window length of 5 milliseconds, what we see is visible glottal pulses, but we can't really see any of the harmonics because 5 milliseconds is too short a window to gather really high precision frequency information. Conversely, if we change that window length to 40 milliseconds, we get a lot of frequency precision, so we can see visible harmonics, but we can no longer see each individual glottal pulse. So depending on what you want to emphasize about your image, you can choose that window length and it'll change whether you have better resolution in the frequency or the time domain. The next option is the maximum frequency, which is pretty self-explanatory and something that you can control later using R. I just recommend that you choose it high enough that it won't be too low for what you eventually want to export. The next thing we'll walk through is the time step. So this is the resolution in the time domain of the actual image. It's not the resolution of the analysis, it just tells us basically uh, the distance between the different pixels on the, on the final product. The same thing goes for the frequency step. So that's our image resolution in the frequency domain. Again, it's not the resolution of the analysis, it's just the resolution of the output image. So one thing you can keep in mind is that Prot by default, when you view in the sound editor, uses 1000 time steps and 250 frequency steps. So this just determines the resolution of the image you see on the screen. So if you've created the image in the editor window that you want, then what you want to do is try to replicate those settings. So for example, I have a sound that has about 600 milliseconds of duration, and I'm viewing from 0 to 5000 hertz. So when I'm choosing my time step for the spectrogram output, I might want to divide the total time by 1000 and divide the total frequency range by 250. Now let's see what that process looks like in action. Here we are in Prot. I'm going to follow those steps. I click the sound lake, analyze the spectrum to spectrogram, and I'll choose a 5 millisecond window length up to 8000 hertz, a time step of 1 millisecond, frequency step of 10 hertz. Now I have this object, but I got to get this to a file on my computer. What I want to do is click Save to Text File. And it's important to save it as a text file and not the other two options because the R script that we'll walk through expects the output to be in this format as a text file. So here I'm going to save it on my computer and of course I'm going to keep track of the file path so that I can call up that path once I use R to read the file in. Here we are in R Studio, and the first thing I want to do is load up some packages. And the next thing I'm going to do is set my working directory where I know this little helper file is. This prot spectrogram functions includes functions to read the spectrogram into an R data frame, a function to constrain the dynamic range, and a function to pre-emphasize the spectrogram. So we'll walk through what those do. So I'm going to set my directory. I'm going to source those files to get those functions. We can see that they've shown up on the right side there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is set the path for where I just saved my spectrogram. So just to make sure I know where we are, it's my documents folder, our read prot spectrograms folder. So you can put that wherever you did, wherever you saved your spectrogram. So here I'm just declaring the name of that spectrogram, and this is the primary function to get that spectrogram into R. So when I run that, it's going to give me this option, or this warning message rather, that some NAs were in there. And that happens every time, it's nothing to worry about. Okay, so the first thing is this main function, convert the spectrogram to a data frame. The pre-emphasize 
What this does is replicate the way that Pratt views a spectrogram, which is to increase the intensity of all the frequency energy by about six decibels per octave. And the reason we do that is because the low frequency energy is typically so much greater than the high frequency energy that we need to tilt the spectrum just to maintain visibility of the high frequencies. And what it does is use the column level, which is the intensity value, and create a new column called level preamp. Then we take the output of that, declared here, and only keep the top 95 decibels of the dynamic range. So you want to be a little bit more liberal in this R script than what you normally do in Prot, where I might view only 55 decibels. For some reason that's not matching up exactly with what we see in Prot, but the output is still very flexible and, and able to be controlled. So to make sure we know the column names we can refer to using the plotting function, let's just see what the names are. We have the file name, time step, frequency step, time, time next, frequency, frequency next. And so those ones that end in next, that'll come up later when we see some more advanced ways of plotting the spectrogram. So the things that we want to plot as the intensity could either be level, level preamp, or level preamp dr, which is the dynamic range constricted version. So we have the main function ggplot this data frame. We're setting x to be time, y is frequency, as any spectrogram would have, and we're filling it according to that level that was pre-emphasized and also constrained for dynamic range. We're coloring tiles, and then the other things are just some extra elements just to make sure the spectrogram looks pretty good. So the output we'll see here looks like a spectrogram. Now, I might want to still mess with this a little bit to change some of the aesthetics, but we know we're on the right track. One of the things you can do in R that you might not be able to do in Prot is to exert some very fine control over the colors in the spectrogram. So here, what I've done is I've declared the timing values for the onsets for each of the phonemes in this word here. So I'm going to encode those in the data frame and then order them properly and then set a color for each one. Now, when I use my plotting function, instead of setting the fill color by the actual intensity value, I'm going to set it by which segment we're plotting. And to make sure I can still scale that color by how loud it is, I'm going to set the alpha level, which will make it more transparent if it's softer and darker if it's louder. So we run that line of code and see what we got. So now I'm highlighting the L in black, the A in red, and then the K sound in this blue color. So this could be good for a demonstration or maybe as you're sequencing through a bunch of images while giving a talk where you can transition from the black to the colored version. Another thing you might want to do is play with the Y axis. So one of the things we know about auditory processing is that we don't perceive frequencies linearly as you'd see on a spectrum or a spectrogram, but we actually perceive them more or less logarithmically. So one of the things we can do in R is to scale the y-axis on a logarithmic scale. So instead of having breaks at 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, this time I'm going to scale the breaks in octaves. So one of the things we need to do here that's different than before is use the geomrect function where we set the x minimum, x maximum value, y minimum, y maximum value. And this is why we encoded not only the time, but the time of the next bin as well, because we want to make sure that the, each pixel in the image extends from the time you're in until the next um, start of the next tile. If you do this using a regular GM tile, all of them will be the same size and they'll be improperly spaced. So now the image is going to look logarithmically scaled. And at first it's not going to look very pleasing because what I have here is a broadband spectrogram, so all that frequency energy is really smushed all along the bottom and not very differentiable. So what I want to do is use a narrowband spectrogram. So earlier I saved a narrowband spectrogram in the same procedure that we did before, and now I'm just going to call that in using the same code that we ran before and see what that looks like when I plot that using a logarithmic scale. So now we can see the output is pretty interesting. So we can see the differences between the frequencies in the harmonics, and we can see how they get gradually closer together on this logarithmic scale. 
we can still see the formant transitions, although getting a little bit squished in the high frequencies, and we can see the overrepresentation of the low frequency harmonics as they would really be perceived in the auditory system. So I'd recommend, if you're drawing a log-scaled spectrogram, that you use a narrow band rather than a broad band. One of the things we talked about before was making sure that by the end of this process, you can export a really high quality image. And here's what we can do using R. Now, some of you might be accustomed to just exporting your image using the R Studio window. A better way of controlling the resolution and the aspect ratio is to use the ggsave function. So in all of these lines of code, I'm calling ggsave on the object that we drew, setting the file name, setting the height and width, and then I can also set the resolution of the image. And I can go as high as I want. 300 is pretty good for what I'll show you on this video, but if you needed a really super high quality image, you could set this to something like 1200. So as I run this, they're gonna come up in my actual window editor so I can show you what they look like here. So here I've called up the first image we made, the plain old spectrogram. Now we have the one that's colored by which phoneme. Now we have the log scaled broadband spectrogram. And finally, the log scaled narrowband spectrogram. So these are images that are more likely to be used in say a publication or a paper that you're writing rather than just an interactive exploration of your data. Now, when you've gotten really serious about which image you're gonna use in an actual publication, you might wanna export not a ping or a JPEG, but actual vectorized version of your plot. So here, I'm saving this as a PDF. So I've changed the file name to end in PDF. I've kept the aspect ratio, but now instead of a DPI or a resolution, I'm gonna use the Cairo PDF device. So when I save that, you can see the image showing up here in my PDF viewer. And what's nice about this is that no matter how far you zoom in, you're gonna get a really crisp resolution. So the resolution of the spectrogram itself is of course gonna be determined by your time step and frequency step. So if you zoom in enough, it'll finally get pixelated. But for the most part, the resolution of this image will scale very gracefully as you change the size of it. Now, suppose you wanna move on from plotting the spectrogram of the word lake, cause you got 10,000 of those. Let's do something a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna plot the word mongoose. So I've saved the mongoose spectrogram. I'm gonna call it up here. And then I'm gonna set all the timing landmarks for my phonemes, including the endpoint. And before it was a little easier because I only had three phonemes in lake, but now I'm gonna do a little bit of a more interesting way of, of coding the timing landmarks. I'm gonna put those segment times into a vector that we can see here. And for that time, stamp that I have in the spectrogram data frame, what I'm gonna do is use the function find interval. So if it's either in the first interval, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and, or so on, and this way I can avoid a pretty heavily nested if loop. Okay, so now I'm gonna plot it. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna plot all the segments past the first one, because the first one is really the time before the M begins. So now we can see the output here in our spectrogram. And well, it's a pretty nice rainbow color. These colors might be a little brighter than what you want, but we can see the proof of concept. The M is in this color, the A, ah, the N, mm, the G, the U, and then finally the S in that bright purple color. Now you can change that color scheme. This is just the default, you know, R fill color scheme. But suppose we want to use, say, a Brewer palette using those dark colors from the Brewer package. Now we've seen it show up in some nice, interesting colors, but we can still have more room for flexibility here. So I can create my own color scheme for this word mongoose using you know, tools like Color Picker or coolers.co um, online. And now I'm just gonna take that same plot and I'm gonna add just a different scale fill. And now I've gotten an output that I really like. I have some primary colors. I still use black for the S and I can see pretty clear differentiation between all the different segments. I'm gonna call the save function on this one and also a version that I've created in black and white, so now we can compare them just in the photo viewer. We start with the regular spectrogram of the word mongoose, and then we can transition over to seeing each phoneme colored differently.